we come from a family and parents that work in the health sector. So I've always felt that health is the most important thing. If you're healthy, you're active, you're gonna be able to learn more, absorb more, and have more energy and so forth. So, uh, so it had to be around health. Um, and then it also, when we started talking with Mark about creating our own foundation and what should be the cost, let's see what's the biggest threat that children are exposed to today. And we looked at the childhood obesity um, and how that was alarmingly growing in the world, not just in the United States, not just in America, but all over. What does that mean? Like, okay, well, let's reinforce healthy habits. That's why we started it. And that's why you said, okay, let's, let's protect children. Let's give them tools, especially again, with the most vulnerable. I think this is always gonna be important, no matter what, you know, it is now, it's gonna be in 20 years, gonna be in 50 years, gonna be in 100 years. How do you protect the well-being of communities, of children, of our future? Uh, how do you protect uh, health? Now we're going to be moving on to our next subject. What would you say in terms of routines about being flexible? Do you think that helps you out in terms of being able to adapt to different situations? It's not easy to be able to change quick when you have a routine. For example, in Spain, we used to uh, lunch very late. Yeah. But in another place, it's not. So you go <laughs> at seven or eight somewhere and everything is closed. Yeah. So it's learning to be flexible yeah, based correct. on your environment. Yes. Yeah. I was always super worried about it. Uh, and now I am traveling a lot. So I'm vegetarian. So it's really hard for yeah. me. Super hard. Especially when you travel. Exactly. Honestly, like I am learning. I am still learning how to do it. It's really hard. Yeah. You have to snap out of the things that you can't control and say, all right, what can I control in this moment and do? But I did have some teammates that were so strict on their superstitions, like every little detail. And if it messed them up, they were shook. Yeah, it's crazy. You know, I always believe that control the controllables, but also not paralysis by analysis. So if you overanalyze, you become tense, you can't perform, you need to be relaxed when you're trying to do your event and do your sport. So if you're overthinking and got that in the back of your mind, you can't really get into your event and fully experience it. So I do feel that, yes, be flexible and control what you can, but always be adaptable. And when you go to a different country, you don't know what's gonna be available. And I said to myself, what can I eat that's gonna fit that need? Pizza, right? <laughs> <laughs> If you're going to be running a marathon, you need good energy. And pizza is something wherever you go in the world, you can get or that Caesar delivered. salad. See, is that really right? <laughs> <laughs> Always at the hotel? <laughs> there it is. Yeah. And yourself? Um, but for me, uh, discipline unlocks freedom. My family and my wife, we have uh, s uh, Monday through Saturday, we're strict. And then Sunday is our day where, as a family, we just relax and it's a really cool thing that we've started to do with my with my dog the whole family we want didn't want to make it feel like chores but it's a responsibility list yeah. it's full of all the things that we're intending to get done that week and the person that checks off the most and has the highest percentage chooses what we eat for lunch on sunday is there's that reward, yeah. there's that reward <laughs> at the end of it good um coming on to injuries and recovery now and talking about how healthy habits accommodate for that and how have you found that you've managed to maintain your healthy habits when either you've been injured or you're not with your teammates and trying to recover um, obviously with yourself Carl with, with the surgery that you had back in 2015. Uh, I think the surgeries changed me in more ways than just that it changed me professionally and personally uh, it really was kind of a wake-up call to I can't keep putting things off in the future. So I was playing at a, I was playing for a good team. I was making decent money, but you know, my goal was to become a you know, a good player on one of the best teams in Europe. And I was like, ah, you know, I'll do that in a couple of years. I'll get there. I'll get there. And then all of a sudden, boom, have surgery. You're not gonna play for a year. Wow. Okay. 
uh, it really kind of starts you thinking. Yeah. So from that, I changed the way I ate, I changed the way I trained, the way I practiced, the way I approached the game, and then it changed me personally. Um, so all that stuff really kind of, I took a very negative thing, a very stressful situation, and tried to turn it around and make it a positive you know, influence on my life. Uh, now that I'm in a situation where this injury that I've had is affecting my quality of life, like having my sister and my mom and my wife say, hey, we don't care if you ever put a ball in the hoop again, like we love you for you. That already helped, helped me mentally. Um, but this has forced me to, to discover so much more about myself. Like, who am I yeah. when I'm not this physical, yeah. large specimen of a person <laughs> yeah. that you know everyone knows, has known me as before. But I realized nothing changes how I show up as a husband, as a, mm -hmm. as a, as a dad, mm -hmm. as a friend. An injury like this affects your quality of life and you're not prepared for that you really have to look in the mirror because you can go one of two ways yeah. with this. And um, I'm just so grateful that I've gone more towards the positive side. Yeah, yeah, it's really good, really good. And with yourself, Maverick, maybe not so much on the physical side, but the mental aspect. Yeah, it is kind of hard sometimes to race with, I don't know, uh, you, you crash, your shoulders go out, and they put in and go, so <laughs> go on the bike. So sometimes Do you try and block that out of your mind if, if that happens? I think the adrenaline uh, helps you a lot, huh? mm -hmm. because I remember one time I, had, uh, I broke my hand, so I went back to racing, and uh, yeah, I think... Uh, that adrenaline and uh, all the motivation it gives you and allowed you to, to ride with the pain. And coming to the point where when you first got into breakdancing and there was a case where you suffered with anorexia. Yeah. And how did that affect your performance? How did you relate the two together? A lot of boys have told me like, yo, you look super ugly today, you look super fatty or mm -hmm. something. And this made me feel like, damn. I can dance with these things in my head because mm. I was like super blocked, like so. Constant battle. Exactly. So after that, I realized that I can keep this, like because I need to choose, like if I really wanna keep dancing, mm -hmm. I need to stop with this. Yeah. I need to go outside and dance because I don't know why, but something inside was like, I, I wanna dance. Not was focusing on another thing, just my mind was, I wanna dance, I wanna dance. Yeah. And is that easy to maintain now, or do you still feel you like know, there's like there? When you have some problems, like it's always a little voice, you know? And when you are down, in general, in your life for another things, sometimes this voice come to you. With the pass of the time, you control this. But I, I learned to say, okay, shut up. It's not, yeah. <laughs> I don't care what you say, yeah. you know? Yeah. So yeah, yeah. Peynir tabağımız var, yeşillikler. My name is Buket Mamur. I am a dietitian for 24 years. And this is my ninth season with Anadolu Efes. I'm in the health team. So uh, my main aim is to contribute uh, them to stay healthy and to boost their performance at the same time. Bu müsvette mi? O müsvette. Tamam, yazıyorum o zaman. Well, nutrition is important to live, to survive. So you can't move if you don't eat, first of all, in the very basic level. And uh, fatigue is the worst enemy of an athlete. You can be very talented, but if you don't have the required energy le uh, storages, then you can't play. Yeah, and when you are tired, you also, uh, your um, decision-making uh, system is also affected. So keeping the energy levels high is our main issue about performance nutrition. In order to make a player change their habits, uh, first, they need something. For example, do they perform bad or is there a warning to them? They don't change any habits when everything is fine. If they believe that they're gonna benefit from that change, and they, if they see a change, they continue. For the popular diets, um, 
the players ask me, do you think ketogenic is fine or should I go vegan or stuff like that? And we make an assessment to, uh, together. I tell them the pros and the cons of the diet. I tell them the benefits. And usually when you speak about diet, it's about body composition. But I always remind the players that at a professional level, we usually don't have any body composition problems, but our problem is to fight with fatigue, to keep the energy levels high, to keep the muscle tissue uh, uh, strong, and to stay healthy. And I can imagine in your sport, weight plays a big role in terms of being on the bike. Is there anything that you've practiced in the past that has, has helped or not helped? Well, actually, uh, a few times a different kind of a diet, trying to get the maximum of your body. I try a fasting diet uh, with keto diet. Yeah, for three, four months, it was great. I feel very powerful, really ripped, without fat. And uh, I felt with a lot of energy. But after that, you know, it blows everything down. I start to get a lot of, uh, you know, stress on the body and uh, cortisol, especially cortisol and all this stuff. So if I have to say found something about diet, it is very, you know, particular. You have to find something that it feels great. For me, it feels good, the Mediterranean food. Mm -hmm. So I eat this, I eat everything, which it makes me feel good, you know. And in terms of recovering from injury, did your nutrition change um, at all? Because obviously being injured, you're not as active. Did you adapt it in certain ways? I did fasting in a different way. Uh, I did intermittent fasting mm -hmm. where I would uh, skip breakfast and just have coffee. I'd work out early in the morning and then I'd eat around 12. And I have between 12 and eight, I, I would eat, eat as much in, in that time frame. but I was burning, my metabolism was at a very high level. Saw good results from that. And for yourself, Carl? Uh, so I kind of went both ways. Uh, after the injury, I lost so much weight so quickly that I was so skinny and frail that I had to, one, prove the doctors wrong and get back sooner. And two, to do that, I had to build my body back up. So I started, I went to the extreme. I started measuring out the ounces, the grams of the chicken, the pasta, everything, just to get all the carbs and the protein and everything, just so I could build my body back up. And since then, it's come down a little bit, but I've kind of stayed along the same line of, you know, making sure I get my protein in just so I can feel full and feel strong because um, that's where I feel at my best. And it's kind of just developed along that way. Was your uh, proven, wanting to prove the doctors wrong more so on them saying like how long it would take you to get back or, or what? Yeah. So first they said it's going to be at least a year. If you, if you come back, it's going to be at least a year. And I don't know if I could say this on camera, but I told the doctor, I said, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He said, okay. I said, you'll see. And I, it was five months when I came back. Wow. So it was. Did you get the fade? Did you go yeah. back to him? Oh, he, he knows. He knows. Yeah, yeah. We, still, we, still, we still stay in good contact. That's good. Yeah. Uh, but no, it was, it was to prove it to them. It was to prove it to myself. And it was, you know, just uh, you tell me a, a year, I'm going to do it less. You're all elite athletes, uh, retired, but you've acquired these healthy habits to help you to perform to your best and could you, can you see that how that could apply to just a general population like you said you could be an example to the neurosurgeon who's got someone else coming in saying like this guy we said 12 months he was back in five possibly down to his healthy habits can you see how what happens in the elite world could transfer over to the general public in terms of being as role models and do you feel that if they're maybe teach that at school, that may have helped. Do you think that's something that would be a good idea? Yeah, it, 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 would, it would help, but I think primarily it's the responsibility of parents to, to help create those scenarios where students, or where their kids can learn, it, and they learn. And the, the thing about all of us, we're all just human beings with passion, and we chase that passion. Like, for regular everyday people, we're not doing anything different except chasing our passion that we just got into a level. It's just so important to realize that life is short and, you know, to, to just live life casually without that intention of chasing something, of going towards a goal. And you don't have to be perfect. You don't have to be perfect in it, but you have to pursue something. Sure. And to your, to your point that you made, like we're live now in a generation where people want things to happen so fast. 
And for me, like, I don't know when that breakthrough for me, like if I'm, when I'm going to start walking or taking my first steps, but in the middle of the process, I can't give up. I can't say, oh man, it might take five years from now. So I'm going to try to shortchange the process. We're just normal people yeah. that are chasing these things <laughs> to the best of our ability yeah. and enjoying all of it. So it's, it's nothing that no one else can't do within their, their, their regular lives as well. Thank you all so much for coming today. It's been such a great talk and hearing from you guys, it's been really good. I'm sure it'll help a lot of people. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.